Hi, I'm Tom Shepard, one of the technical team at Stormagic. And in this video, I'll be taking you through the setup and configuration of Stormagic's SVSAN on VMware's vSphere 6.5. This video should be used alongside the SVSAN manual, which can be found at stormagic.com forward slash manual, where you'll find detailed information on all topics covered in this video. Now, the first thing we're going to look at is the underlying storage configuration in those hosts. Now, there's a few ways we can do this, but essentially we need some local storage for your ESXi installation and also some local storage for VSA system drives. And then the rest of the storage can be handed up uh, either as an RDM, a raw device mapping, or as a VMDK into the VSA to use as your pool storage, which is what your virtual SAN will, will be made up of. We also have the option to add in SSD drives for the optional uh, caching features. We still recommend using a level of hardware RAID protection on your servers for the protection against failing disks. This is very flexible, so this could be anything from a RAID 0 to a RAID 10. Now, in these systems here that I have on the screen, we have three LUNs that have been created on top of the RAID controller. One is a 50 gig LUN or virtual disk, which is where ESXi has been installed. And then there's a small local data store, which is where we're going to install the VSA system drives into. Next, we have an 880 gig virtual disk, and this is what we'll be using for the virtual SAN pool. And finally, we have a 240 gig SSD in there as well, and that's for the SSD caching features. One thing that is important to note is if you're looking to use the RDM method of attaching the storage to the VSA, which is our best practice, then the storage you're looking to use for the virtual SAN pool mustn't have any other data stores or anything else on that storage it needs to be completely empty so that we can hand it up as that RDM. So this is very important that you have that separate storage for your ESXi install and for the data store where the VSA is going to sit. Next, we're going to take a look at the network configuration on your hosts. As a bare minimum, a single one gig interface is all that's required as a dedicated network between your hosts for the storage traffic. As a best practice, we recommend using two or more NICs and that's just for redundancy, but we can also load balance across those for improved throughput. And we support all uh, 1 gig, 10 gig, and 40 gig networking. On the systems that I'm using today, we have two 1 gig interfaces that we have assigned as dedicated storage network. And what you'll notice here is that we've created a vSwitch per physical adapter. And on that virtual switch, there's both a virtual machine port group and also a VM kernel port. You have the option with SVSAN of connecting your two hosts together on that storage network, either through switches or also through a direct connection using crossover cables in that simple two node configuration. In this case, these two servers are just connected with the crossover cables in a direct connection. Once both your hosts are configured, you can then start looking at the first step and in installing SVSAN, which is installing the plugin onto your vCenter. Now we support both the Windows vCenter and also the vCSA, which is the Linux appliance. And I'm going to take you through the steps involved in installing the plugin on both of those platforms. I'm going to start by showing you how to install the plugin on the Windows vCenter. The plugin, once deployed, will allow you to deploy and manage VSAs and create shared data stores. The first thing you'll want to do is copy and extract the installation files that you've downloaded from our support suite at support.storemagic.com to your Windows vCenter, where inside you will find the setup application. Right click and run this as administrator. Click next on the first screen, set the terms and license agreement. A typical installation here would be suitable, but I'll take you through the custom options to explain uh, the different parts of the plugin. Here you'll see we have the vCenter integration services. This is the plugin that allows you to deploy the VSAs and create the storage. We also have our neutral storage service, and that installs uh, automatically as part of a typical setup. We also have the StoreMagic SCOM connector, which is for System Center, and that's something that you can install optionally. And we also have there uh, the Hyper-V deploy wizard for when you're deploying SVSAN onto Hyper-V. So I'm just going to leave the NSH or neutral storage service and our integration services packages selected and click next. Finally, click install and wait for the wizard to complete. 
Uh, as the wizard progresses, you'll need to enter your administrator credentials for your v center. And finally, when the wizard's complete, simply click finish. I'm now going to take you through the same process of installing the plugin, but this time on your vCenter Linux appliance or vCSA. So the first thing we need to do is copy the svsan installation files to your vCSA. And we're going to do that using a protocol called SCP and a piece of software called WinSCP, which you can download off the internet for free, which is a Windows GUI version that makes this uh, process easier. But in order for that SCP protocol to work, we first need to make a change to our VCSA. And so we need to open an SSH session to it, log in, and then run the following commands to change the default shell to enable that SCP protocol. We do that by typing in shell.set dash dash enabled space true. shell and then ch sh hyphen s forward slash bin forward slash bash space root you'll then be able to use winfcp to open a connection to your vcsa and that will allow you to copy the stormagic plugin installation files the svsan.sh file across into your temp directory on your VCSA. Once that file has completed copying up to your VCSA, you can then go back to your SSH and we're going to go to the directory that we copied the SH script to. And then we're going to run a chmod 777 to change the permissions of that svsan sh file so that we can run that. And then we're going to run that file with a dash h command, which is for help. And that will show us the different options we can have here. So we're going to do a dash dash install, but we're also going to do a dash dash include dash nsh so that it also installs the nsh service onto our vCenter as well. So to install, we just type dot forward slash press S and then tabs to auto complete that dash dash install followed by your username and password and then finally dash dash include dash NSH and then we just click enter there to install once the plugin has completed installation the only thing left to do is to change the default shell of your vCenter back to what it was before. And we do that by typing chsh space hyphen s forward slash bin forward slash appliance sh space root and then press enter. Then we can just close down our SSH session and our WinSCP session. Now that you've installed the StoreMagic plugin onto your vCenter, we can move on to the next step of deploying the VSAs to your ESXi hosts. Regardless of whether you're using the VCSA or the Windows vCenter, the following steps are the same. We navigate to the StoreMagic plugin by clicking on the data center on the left hand side. Configure on the top menu, and then StoreMagic is found here on the left hand side, and this is the StoreMagic plugin. From here, we will select Deploy VSAs onto multiple hosts. Click Next on the first screen, and add in these available ESXi hosts. Enter the local password, click Next. Agree to the license. Specify a naming convention for your VSAs. I'm going to call them simply VSA1 and VSA2. I'm going to leave the default selected here, which is allocate storage using a raw device mapping. 
It will automatically find the appropriate storage. Click next. Click yes on this box here to temporarily enable SSH so that we can create that RDM. We can tick to enable the SSD caching, and again, it will find the appropriate drive and also enable memory based caching and decide how much RAM we want to assign for that cache. I'm just going to go with four gig in these systems and click next. Then we can configure the networking. You'll see in these systems, I have two dedicated storage NICs. And so I'm going to mark them for mirroring and iSCSI traffic and enter some static IP addresses. This will automatically then use the next IP in the range for the second VSA. Same again on the second SVSAN network. And then for the VM network, which is just going to be used for the management, I'm going to leave this as DHCP, but untick the two storage traffic flags and just leave management ticked. Click next. Here is where you can enter your eval or full license keys. And then finally, a password that you'll use to manage the VSAs with. Click next. You can check through the summary here just to make sure that the settings are all as you want them to be. And then finally, click finish. You can see tasks appearing here to deploy the OBF template for the VSAs and configure them. And once complete, the VSAs were powered on and you'll see the complete message here in the recent task list. Now that the VSAs have been deployed to your ESXi hosts, the only thing left to do is to create a shared data store. And again, we do that through the StoreMagic plugin. We simply click on the Create a Shared Data Store link, click Next on the welcome screen. Here we specify a name for the data store and a size. And you can see here as well that we can click Use All in that tick box. Click Next. Here we will select our neutral storage host. So in this case, I'm going to select the vCenter that we're currently connected to. We can enable both SSD and memory caching on a data store basis. Click Next. And then we select the host that we want to connect that storage to. Click Next again. We have to be logged into those hosts so that we can connect the iSCSI storage. So if we're not authenticated already here, go ahead and log in. Click next again, check through the summary here to make sure all the settings are as you wish, and then finally click finish. Again, we'll now see another recent task here for StoreMagic creating the storage. And this is going to create the mirrored target between the VSAs. It's going to connect the iSCSI drive into those servers and configure the multipathing. And then it will finally create a data store on top of there so that we can start to create and copy virtual machines there. So now that task to create the storage is completed, we can look at our VSA web GUI by clicking on Manage VSAs, selecting a VSA from the list here, and clicking on the management URL. We'll see under our system information, we're currently in a warning state. And if we click on to targets here on the top, we'll see that's because we have our new target that has been created. And when you create a new target, it's marked as synchronized on one side. I and mean, there's a full resynchronization from one VSA to the other for performance and consistency reasons. And so we can see it's doing that resynchronization task and currently we're in a degraded state. But the storage is still accessible. And as we go back to our vSphere web client, if we select one of our ESXi hosts and we look under storage devices, We'll now see that we can see a store magic iSCSI disk. And if we click on that and select paths, we'll see the iSCSI multipath thing configured there. And then finally, if we click on data stores, we'll see our SVSAN data store, which we can now start to create virtual machines or copy existing ones into. 
So that's the installation of SV SAM complete. In this video, we've had a look at the prerequisites, the configuration of your storage and networking. We've been through how to install the plugin onto your vCenter, whether that's a VCSA or a Windows installation. And then we've been through the deployment of the VSAs and finally the creation of the storage. At this point, you're fully set up and all you need to wait for is the target to completely synchronize across both of those VSAs before you're completely highly available and you can start to do some testing if you like. If you'd like any other help with anything SVSAN related, then please don't hesitate to reach out to one of the sales or technical team or check out our website where there's lots of information and make sure as well to check out the other videos on our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching and see you again.